Hi everyone, it's Nicole here for Mama Elephant, and today I have a card featuring the brand new Alpine Carolers stamp set and coordinating dies, and I've created this little scene of carolers in front of a Distress Ink background. To start my card, I have some smooth white cardstock here, and I'm going to stamp the images of the little carolers from the Alpine Carolers stamp set, and I stamped quite a few images so that I would get some clean stamped images. It was a brand new stamp set when I used it for this card, and a lot of times they need to be stamped off a couple times so you get a really crisp, clean image. And I wanted to make sure if I had any mistakes, I already had some images stamped and I could go ahead that I could go ahead and color. So once I have all of my images stamped, I am going to color these in with Copic markers, and I'm going to speed through the coloring pretty quickly simply because there's quite a bit of detail work involved with these images. They are pretty small, but there's lots of fun little details you can color in. So I, I want to speed through it since it did take me a little bit of time to color it or color them in. One of the fun things is that you can color them in any colors that you want to. And I chose to go a little bit of a more non-traditional route. I thought that would be kind of fun to not really focus so much maybe on red and green. So for the girl here, I did pinks and oranges. And I think that the bright colors really help them pop off of the background of this card. So I'll continue to color in all of the areas on the little girl first before I move on to the other little people here in or on this sheet. One thing I kind of kept in mind in the back of my mind as I was working on this is I wanted them to somewhat resemble the Who's from Whoville from The Grinch That Stole Christmas. I already knew kind of what I wanted to do for the background of my card or the scene that I wanted to build. And so when I colored them in, I kind of tried to stick to some brighter colors that somewhat reminded me of that scene from the animated Grinch that stole Christmas. And I hope that that kind of translates into the finished project. I did go back before I finished coloring her and color in all the skin for the other images that I was going to color and then I went back and finished her hair. Sometimes as you're coloring, if you're maybe stuck, like I wasn't quite sure how I wanted to finish her boots or the trim on her hat, the little hood or whatever step away for a minute or work on other images that you need to color like I needed to color the rest of the skin so that was an easy thing to just pop over and do I already knew what I was gonna do there so I went ahead and finished that and while I did that I thought I wanted her boots to look kind of like the traditional Uggs so then I went back and and finished those and added some red trim for her her hood I don't like to make them too matchy matchy so I didn't want to like do the hood of her coat well is pink like her jacket and but that little furry trim I guess is what I mean I didn't really want to make it orange and so I chose to do kind of a, a darkish magenta red and I like that much better so I, I did the boots for the other little girl who's kind of in the little bear hoodie because I went ahead and kind of stuck with that same kind of Uggs type theme for the boots. And then I wasn't sure what color I wanted to do or hoodie. I wasn't real crazy about doing it maybe in the traditional little bear brown or, or white or whatever. I wanted to do something kind of brighter because like I said, I was trying to keep all of their outfits more on the bright side. So I, I went ahead and jumped up and did the little sweater on the little boy and then I'm doing the sweater on the larger boy as well. Something else to keep in mind is colors that look naturally good together. You don't want to jump too crazy and do too many colors that don't coordinate very well. 
So I chose to kind of stick in the brights family with pinks, oranges, greens, teals, those kind of colors, things that complement and look good next to each other. So I decided to go kind of crazy with her little bear hoodie jacket and do it in an aqua color, which I think ended up turning out really cute. I like it because it definitely gives that nice differentiation of color between her hair, her skin, the boots, and then her jacket's a bright, bold color instead of being maybe a more subtle neutral, which would definitely be cute, but I was going for that really bright look. And then I went ahead with the Wink of Stella Clear Glitter Brush Marker and, and did that over her jacket to make it kind of glittery and shimmery. Now for the boys, I you can do anything with their pants, but I kind of decided to stick with the more denim type look. So I went ahead and did both of their pants more in the blues to create some denim jeans. And just building up those blues with my blue Copic markers. All of the marker colors I used will be listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. So if you are wondering exactly what colors I used for every step of the way, they are all listed underneath. I used quite a few markers for this one. I do not always use this many but I used quite a few colors just to really create these bright ensembles for these cute little carolers. So I'm building up those jeans and, and going over them quite a few times to really build up that denim look. Now for the scarf for this little boy, I did choose to do the red and white. I kind of like I said, stayed away from the traditional more red and green, but I wanted to pop just a tiny bit of that in, and that scarf was a great place to do a little red and white check. And it looks cute with a little green sweater. Now the sweater could be that wide band there underneath that I left more of a white color and I only used some uh, cool grays on. That could be the bottom band of his sweater, but I decided it kind of looked more like maybe a t-shirt hanging out, or that's the look I wanted to go for for this one, just to have that variation of color where you go from the green to the white to the denim. So I left it more white just to kind of look like a layered, layered outfit. I'll finish the little boy's hat here with some greens. And I did make his little stocking cap match his sweater a little bit. I thought that would be kind of fun. Um, I didn't use exactly the same colors all the way through, but several of the same colors, enough so that it matched quite a bit. Where it has that same little striped band and the sweater striped, I thought it would really be fun if both of them had that, had similar colors. I didn't want to go too crazy or jump the sharp shark too much with with uh, crazy colors for his stocking cap. Once they are all colored in, I'm going to take all the coordinating dies and use a little post-it tape to hold them in place and run them through my Big Shot die cutting machine. I can die cut them all with one pass of the machine this way. So now I have my little characters. I'm ready to build my background. I'm using the large stitched rectangle from the Pika Frames die collection from Mama Elephant and some watercolor paper. And I'm using the watercolor paper, I kind of thought I might use some water with my Distress ink and I didn't really, um, but since I thought I might that is what paper I used. So because it's the same size as the die, I kind of had to hold it in place and die cut it with my magnetic platform. And I'm actually gonna have to do this for two pieces of watercolor paper because that snowy border that they're standing on is also die cut from watercolor paper. One of the great things about the magnetic platform for the Sizzix Big Shot is I didn't have to use post-it tape to hold that in place. All I did was lay it down and then kind of place the die over it until it butted up against the edges and then run it through to get that great stitched detail. Now that curved edge die is brand new from Mama Elephant and I use that to create my snowy border and you might have seen that I laid out my greeting that I'm using from Alpine Carolers so that I made sure and made it deep enough to make room for that big greeting. 
And there are my little characters that will all work out, so I'm ready to distress my background. I'm using a little Wild Honey, I believe, uh, Distress Ink. It is list the exact color is listed below the video on YouTube here to create that kind of sun coming over the horizon look. And so I, I didn't do it all the way across the paper, if that makes sense. I kind of just tried to do a circular shape there right above where my horizon line will be. And then I'm taking some tumbled glass distress ink and working that in from the edges of the card into that kind of yellowish orange, if that makes sense. So I'll work these colors in and blend them out until I really get the look I want. So then I'll go back with my yellow and blend that back out into the blue and work with that until I get the look that I want. Well, it's kind of light, so I decided I needed to go back with a little bit darker color. And I will do that, or go in with some peacock feathers to really darken up the sky and blend it into that yellow really nicely. So I'll set that aside for a minute, and I am gonna take a little tumbled glass to that, just the top edge of my snow to add just a tiny bit of color. I don't want a whole lot. And then I'm going to look and hold that, or place that on my card, and make sure that I like how it's all coming together. Sometimes it's good, you might have an idea in your head, but to check yourself as you're working to make sure that the vision that you have for your project is, is kind of translating well, if that makes sense. So that is what I want it to look like, but like I said, the sky isn't quite dark enough. So I will go back with a little bit darker ink now, that peacock feathers, and really blend that in. And that ends up really being exactly what I wanted to do. I love the darkness of that next to the yellow. I really think it makes it look much, much better. I can blend in the yellow even more, blend it back out into the blue. One of the great things about Distress Inks is you can blend them as many times as you need to. I'll stamp that greeting with some black dye ink right in the center of my snowdrift, and then I'm taking some Scotch foam adhesive along that snowdrift to pop it off my background just a little bit, and I'll line that up and place it at the bottom of my background piece. And with that stitching, the reason I die cut two pieces of that watercolor paper from that stitched rectangle is because I wanted the stitching to go all the way around the bottom of the card. I knew I would have that curved edge snowdrift, but I still wanted that great stitching detail all around the top of the card to continue all the way around the bottom snowdrift. I adhered my carolers with a little bit of foam adhesive so that they pop up off of the background as well. And I'm going to finish my card with the little musical notes to really make the caroler theme finish off. Now one thing I did finish with is taking a white gel pen and filling in all of the little areas on the music notes with white and that really helps create some nice detail for that finishing stamping. I hope you've enjoyed this video showcasing the brand new Alpine Carolers stamp set and dies from Mama Elephant. The supplies I've used are listed and linked below the video on YouTube. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.